get ready to smile again with radio's home folks, Think and Said, written by Paul Reimer. Think and Said is brought to you by Procter & Gamble's Crisco, the pure all-vegetable shortening. It... Well, sir, it's late afternoon as our scene opens now. And here in the living room of the small house halfway up in the next block, we find Vic and young Russell. Vic arrived home from the office about ten minutes ago, immediately stretching out on the Davenport for a nap. Young Russell is newly returned from a season of after-school adventuring in Tatman's vacant lot. Oyster Cracker and Bluetooth Johnson come within nine-sixteenths of an inch of having a fist fight. As soon as I go hang up my coat and hat, I'll tell you all about it. Leave your hat and coat on. Huh? Leave your hat and coat on. Go away. This sure is a fine welcome home. I want to enjoy an hour's refreshing slumber. I do not want to listen to dull and tedious anecdotes. Oyster Cracker coming within nine sixteenths of an inch of having a fist fight with Bluetooth Johnson is no dull and tedious anecdote. Exciting as a half wit horse. Go away, go away, go away. Be a good fellow. Somebody's away. in the kitchen. Hello? Our witless grocery boy, Irving, no doubt. Hello, groceries? At you, Irving? Afternoon, Russell. Mama in the living room, Arlie. Oh, hi, Uncle Fletcher. <laughs> I don't like to rub it in, Gov, or rejoice in your bad luck, but it looks like you're going to have to get up from the damn board after all. <laughs> Fate's unkind to me today. I'm life's football. Afternoon, Friday. Afternoon, Uncle Fletcher. Let's date up Margie McClure at Adele Garraway and hire a bobsled and put up some sandwiches and go to Peoria and take in a vaudeville show. <laughs> Well, Vic, honey. Why, greetings, 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 greetings. You home, are they? Yes, sir. I hope you would be. Oh, you are impertinent, sir, to pay me such bold compliments. That's right. No, tell the honest truth. I, I had a hunch I'd find you home. <laughs> Russell, make him stop. I'm all blushes and confusion. <laughs> Lady upstairs, are they? No. She's just in a friend of hers over in East Monroe Street. No. Oh, yes. She's over on East Monroe Street and won't be home for a little while. I imagine she'll stay till around 5 o'clock. Well, by George. What's the matter? Circumstances is working out perfect. If I'd spent a week planning arrangements, circumstances couldn't have worked out any more perfect. Oh? I have a matter to take up with you private, Vic. Yeah? It is something of an emergency. Really? Well, here, I'll get up. I can't be lying prostrate on any Davenport when there's an emergency to be dealt with. One moment, one moment, one moment. And I find you home, Vic, honey, and I find Sadie away from home. So, by George, if I'd spent a week planning arrangements on it, circumstances couldn't have worked out any more perfect. There was a case in Ohio where a set of circumstances was responsible oh, for two... Oh, you're on deck, too, Russell, honey. I forgot there for a minute you were on deck. Uh, yeah, I'm on deck. The circumstances aren't so perfect with you on deck. Likely you're on your way over to Tatlin's vacant lot, Russell, honey. I just got home from Tatlin's vacant lot. Bluetooth Johnson and Heine Call and the different ones playing baseball. Bluetooth Johnson is downtown getting his hair cut and Heine Call is taking his violin lessons. Yes, having wonderful times there at Tatlin's vacant lot. Where's your hat? Where is his hat, Vic? I don't know. Let's look around. This is the second time in five minutes I've been asked to clear off the premises. See? You're a hateful person. Nobody likes you. <laughs> I guess you're right. I'll help you find your hat, Russell, honey. No, you wouldn't want to miss out on the glorious times Bluetooth Johnson and Heine call and the different ones they're having. Let me see now. What did you do with your hat? <laughs> I got it right here wired up in my hand, Uncle Fletcher. Don't worry, I'm leaving. But I'm not going to Tatlin's vacant lot. That's right, Tatlin's vacant lot. And there's nobody there. The guys broke up half an hour ago. Yes, I know. Bluetooth Johnson's downtown getting his hair cut and Heine Call's taking his violin lessons. Bluetooth Johnson and Heine Call, mighty fine lads. You'll have a circus playing baseball with them there in Tatlin's vacant lot. Uh, putting on your hat now, are they? Yeah. He looks nice with his hat on. Don't he look nice with his hat on, Vic? Beautiful. Simply beautiful. Oh, yes. Goodbye, Russell Honey. Okay, you win. Tell Bluetooth Johnson and Heine call on the different ones over in Tatman's Lake a lot. Hello. <laughs> okay. And don't hurry back, Russell Honey. I'll get revenge on you, Gus. I don't like to hoodwink and swindle the lad, Vic, but this isn't a matter for the women and the children. Well, hey, uh, whip out this business. If it's an emergency, I'm eager to hear it. I'm on pins and needles. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold the phone, hold the phone. Russell, honey! Yeah? We need him. He can be a witness. 
Witness? I'm going to put in your care a document of great value. We need someone to witness the transaction. Yes, Uncle Fletcher. Being a child that way, he'll make the ideal witness. Why? Because he can be in on the secret and we're not taking any chances. If he was a grown-up in on the secret, he might take advantage and cheat us out of the secret. What do you want, Uncle Fletcher? Come on back. Yes, come on back, Russell, honey. Yes, as a child that way, he'll make the perfect witness. We can trust him where we couldn't trust a grown-up. What is this big secret? Don't let on to him. He's a witness now. What is this big secret? Vic, honey. Yeah? I have here in my pocket... Yeah? Roy dejectedly hidden formula for hyena grease. Is that a fact? Yes. That is a fact. Well... (laughs) (laughs) Well, here I am back. Yes, it's great having you. Uh, Russell, honey, I and Papa decided maybe it was too far for you to go clear over there to Tampa's vacant lot after a busy day at school. So you just stay here with I and Papa. Take off your hat. <laughs> okay. He's taking his hat off, Vic. Uh-huh. He looks nice with his hat off. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. <laughs> okay. Getting back to business, Vic, honey. Yeah, let's get back to business. You say you're putting your pal dejectedly big secret for me in my care? Yes. Oh, why? <clears throat> Maybe Russell ought to go stand in a clothes closet while we talk over this matter. Uh, no. Think he ought to go stand in the clothes closet, Vic? No. I believe Russell can be trusted not to reveal any. It's all right. Perfectly all right. And I know Roy dejectedly would agree. For a fraction of a second there, I thought perhaps we might be taking too much of a chance. You can stay, Russell. You don't have to go stay in the clothes closet. I never had any intention of standing in any clothes closet. Put your hat back on. Oh, yeah. He can put his hat back on if he likes, Vic. Sure. Thanks a lot. Only too happy. Only too happy. Now, Vic, honey. Yes, sir. You bet. Hot stuff. I want to put Roy Dejectably's hidden formula for hyena grease in your care. Why? Because you own a safety deposit vault. You mean you want me to you keep You own a... a safety deposit vault down there at the bank. I don't own any safety deposit vault. Yes, you do. I rent a little lockbox in a safety deposit vault down the People's Bank, but That's I That's what don't I have... say. That's what I say. Well, it was your idea. Roy Dejectably's hidden formula for hyena grease has got to be kept in a secure place. So, when it arrived from Dixon today in the morning's mail, I immediately remembered you, Vic, and your great big safety deposit vault. My great big safety deposit vault. Do you have any objections? No, I guess not. Is the document a large one? My little lockbox can accommodate a few more papers if they're not too bulky. I have it right here in my pocket. Oh, fine. Take off your hat, Russell. I got it off. You look nice with your hat off. Here, Vic. Is Roy dejectedly his hidden formula for hyena grease? It's just a slip of paper. Oh, sure. Plenty of room for that in the lockbox. I consider Roy imprudent and reckless to send this document through the mail. But he insisted on doing it. He wanted me to see it. Uh Uh-huh. By George, my hand just trembled this morning when I opened the envelope and seen what was inside. I got kind of panic-stricken. And then I thought, Vic! Vic and his great big safety deposit vault. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, it's the talk of the town. See, the joker in all this is that Roy has no patent on his product. He owns no copyright license or infringement on it. And naturally, the big scientific laboratories in Chicago, Milwaukee, Moline, Waukesha, and Dubuque would give their right arm to get a hold of the formula. I just did. Give the right arm. <laughs> People refer to Roy dejectedly as the inventor of hyena grease, but that, of course, is not strictly true. Anybody that invented hyena grease would first have to invent hyena. Yes. But after years of experimenting in his basement there in Dixon, Roy discovered that if you mix turpentine, creosote, lamp black, and tractor oil in your hyena grease, you've got the finest preparation for smearing on your shoes there is in the entire civilized world. Uh, huh? The finest preparation for smearing on your shoes there is in the entire civilized world. Uh. So, Vic, honey, you say you'll do it? Yes, sure. You'll take this document into your charge... See that it gets placed securely in the great big safety deposit vault you own down in the People's Bank? I will. I am hereby handing you, Vic, Roy Dejectedly's hidden formula for hyena grease. The finest preparation for smearing on your shoes there is in the entire civilized world. Amen. You have seen what transpired here between I and Papa, are they, Russell? Yes, uh huh. Well, Vic, it's done. Yes, it's well done. I thought so myself. Oh, quite an impressive ceremony. It was. It was. Say, maybe we ought to shake hands. Yeah, let's do. 
Russell, honey. Yes? Take your hat off. Which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block. And don't forget to listen to Vic and Say the next time. This is Ed Roberts saying good day for Crisco. It's digestible. This is the National Broadcasting Company.